Hey, welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining me. I'm Richard Robinson in New Zealand, and today we're going to be painting the red boat. And uh, here's a much earlier painting I did of this, a quick demo. And it's based on a photo I actually took some 25 years ago. So hold on to those old photographs because you can dig them up and make new paintings with them. Now I took this painting, the older one, and uh, what you're going to see in this lesson is the process of me changing this design into a different design, something I hope or think is better. That all happens in the iPad, so you're going to see my thought process of how to improve this painting to make it more interesting. Then we're going to take that design and take it to the canvas and you're going to see how to produce that painting in a really beautiful, painterly, expressive manner. We're also going to be looking at Joachim Soroya, a Spanish painter from about 100 years ago, to see how he dealt with boats at the seaside. Just an amazing painter, so one well worth taking a look at. And the main thing we're going to be looking at in this painting is how to introduce more variety into your work. And variety, as they say, is the spice of life, and it's also the spice in your painting. It's what makes it more interesting and uh, makes you want to look at it for longer. So I hope you'll join me in this lesson. You're going to be learning all of that and a whole lot more in painting the red boat. So the following is just a sample of the full lesson, which is over an hour long and contains a lot of information. So I really love this little painting, but I do feel like now I, I want to change it a little bit. I want to add some more to it. And I've been looking at Soroya's work. He's a Spanish painter from about 100 years ago. If you go to Google and look in images for uh, Soroya, Sorolla, it's Soroja uh, boats, and um, yeah, search for images, you'll see all the ways in which he painted boats. And um, there's a few commonalities about um, the way he did it. Um, one of the very common things he did was to crop the sails out of the paintings, right? And uh, that's not all that common. Um, normally when people are painting a boat, they like to get the whole sail in there, but he crops it pretty hard. Uh, and that gives the effect of being like a just a quick snapshot of life rather than this carefully composed thing that's got the whole boat in it and and everything is just so it's like it's like you're standing on the beach and and the boat is there and it's just focused on the bit that he really loves about that scene you also notice it's a very warm light most of the time on the sails, so a lot of yellow in the in the sunlit side of the sails. And of course they're big beautiful billowing sails that uh, are common to the fishing boats in Spain, or uh, was a hundred years ago. Yeah, take some time looking through those. The ones that, oh, this, I love this one here, look at this. Look at that, just f the fluidity of it, the, um, the movement in there, beautiful. It's my little painting. So how would I like to change that? I would actually like to add in the sail from the other boat, so that one there, right? So to do that, I feel like the boat should be moved over a little bit. I'm just going to do that. So I'll just duplicate that and move it over there. Just a bit. Okay. Now see that? It's got a cool white there right now if you want it if you want the light to be warm throughout the whole painting every thing that's white needs to have 
a real sense of that warmth about it here. Yeah? So, just don't want to draw too much attention to that little thing. Remember all the reflections tend to be a little darker. Quite like that, a bit more dynamic. So that's before, after, before, after, before, after. Okay, now we'll move to the painting. Okay, so let's get started. We've got a 15 inch square canvas stretched out here onto a board with masking tape. This is Frederick's Ultra Smooth Canvas. And these are my colors. We've got M. Graham's Oils, Ultramarine Blue, Cadmium Red, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White. Very simple, limited color palette. Down here we've got a little cap of Walnut Alkyde Medium. Going to use that to thin the paints out for a smoother, more uh, painterly look. And we've got a little cap here with some Gamsol in it. We're just going to use that at the start. My brushes. I've got these long bristle brushes, flats, a size 10 or 12. And these synthetics. This is a dagger and that's a rigger so they're going to be used for the detail in the end of the painting mainly I'm going to use these ones and i like these because they're long bristled which means they hold a lot of paint and so each brush stroke can go further and also because they're bendy like this because they have long bristles that means you can get a very calligraphic stroke with them now if you were using acrylics instead of oils what I'd suggest is you just get a spray bottle full of water and every five minutes give the canvas a light spray and also the colors on your palette a light spray and put out bigger piles of color than you would with oils because you tend to use a lot more with acrylics especially if you want some chunky impasto effects it takes a lot more acrylics to create that than it does with oils now keeping the acrylics wet like that allows you to achieve a really painterly fluid look that's much easier to achieve with oils, but you can still get it with acrylics if you keep those paints wet. And also with acrylics, you need to paint a bit faster. So let's dive right in. We're gonna get a big brush, dip it in the Gamsol, and just gonna put a base of color down here. Really nice warm yellow ochre. I'm doing this because it's going to help create a color harmony throughout the whole painting. It's also going to create a lot more fluid, loose brushwork because this is all wet. And it's going to be very useful in the, in the warm light that I want to portray in those sails. And you'll see that soon. Now if you painted it on a little too thickly and it's starting to run, you don't want it running, just want it damp. So just wipe it off with a cloth and that's all we'll use the Gamsol for. Don't always do that, but it just suits this painting because I have these big areas of warm color that I want and I want a really loose painterly effect. So that should help. Okay, using that same brush, gonna dip that in the walnut oil. Now that is going to be my punchiest color in the whole painting. And where do I want that? Around about here. Just slightly off to the right from the middle. And a little bit over here as well. Something like that. So these are the figures. This is the boat. Maybe a little in here as well. So the more painterly you start off the painting with, the 
the looser the paint is going to be in the finished painting. If you start off tight with a tight little drawing, then it's just going to get tighter and tighter as you go. So just going from the dark to the mid values, and then we're going to add some lights in afterwards. Nice crisp. So the temptation is to make all the highlights as strong as one another to make it pop more, you know. Um, but it ends up looking just too same same if you do that. Like it's it's um, losing the chance for more variety, yeah. So just be careful that you know you have uh, one or two strong highlights in an area and then others that are less bright than that. Now up here, this is such a light spot, I don't want the, the dark to um, cut across that and destroy the illusion of all that light. So I'm going to just see I'm lightening that color off with some white and yellow ochre. And so I figure out where I want to start and where I want to finish. Um, a mole stick is a really good idea. So I got one of those. Nice red one matches the boat. And you can just lay that across. That's a really easy way to do it. It needs a little work though. So in the lighter spot, I've just left it a bit, yeah, so that it looks sort of blasted out by the light, which I quite like. This is, it's important how you load the brush for this as well, to get a good little blob of paint on the end, or a, a line of paint really, not a blob, because a blob will just make a mess. And I've just got the tip, and I'm just going to very lightly um, touch the the surface, yeah. Um, and breathe out while you do it. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a, a nerve-wracking one there. You don't want to get that one wrong. So practice, you know, you can practice them on your palette before you do it. That's a good way to go. And let's pull off the tape. There you go. So you can get the full lesson on mypaintingclub.com. Please remember to like and subscribe if you like this video. All right, so happy painting. Hope you enjoy this one and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.